So the reading today is from Luke 15, verses 1 to 7. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering round to hear him. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbours together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Amen. So today we're looking at God's radical and reckless love for his children, illustrated by the complete foolishness of abandoning 99 sheep in order to save one. I wonder if you have actually ever been lost or have lost someone that was with you. We once lost our eldest daughter, as Hazel would say, it would be her, wouldn't it, Hazel? When we were on a very busy beach, we were shouting out her name and frantically running around trying to find her. She wasn't lost for long. But in that situation, you would never give up looking, would you? And if you're the person who is lost, you would always be hoping that someone was looking for you, that you weren't just abandoned. God never leaves us abandoned. No matter how far away from him we are, no matter that we've forgotten about him altogether, He's there, willing us back into his flock. And in the reading we heard from Luke's Gospel, Jesus was being hounded, as ever, by the laity of the day. They were sniping away at his habit of dining with sinners and tax collectors. But instead of attacking these nagging people, Jesus tells them a story. In fact, he tells them three stories. He tells them the one we're looking at today, the story of the lost sheep. But he also tells them about the woman who lost the coin and about the son who was lost but came home. All stories on the theme of being lost, but also about being found. It may seem to be pretty foolish for the shepherd to leave 99 sheep in order to search for just one. But the shepherd knew that the 99 were completely safe in the fold, whereas the lost sheep was in danger. I was once driving down the A63 when the van in front of me suddenly put his brakes on and pulled up. And obviously I had to do the same. The reason he'd had to do it was because there was a sheep running across the road. And the sheep, I can tell you, looked absolutely frightened to death. We were frightened because of what we'd had to do, but the sheep was frightened to do it too. It was frightened because it had gone astray. It was a sheep that was lost and it was in obvious danger. That's why the shepherd seeks out the lost ones, to rescue them and save them. Each sheep is valuable to the shepherd, and so they will always search diligently for even one that is lost. And when that sheep is found, what joy! The shepherd happily brings home the sheep on his shoulders and then gathers people together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. Jesus continues by saying, I tell you that in the same way, 
there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Every individual is precious to God. He grieves over every loss and rejoices whenever one of his children is found and brought into the kingdom. So despite the continual criticism that Jesus received for associating with members of society who were regarded as sinful and unrepentant, his message to them was clear. He had to be associated with sinners because he wanted to bring the lost people, the people who appeared to be beyond hope, the gospel of his kingdom. The teaching was revolutionary. God actively seeking out sinners, tenderly searching for them, joyfully forgiving them and bringing them home. This is the kind of extraordinary, radical, reckless love that God has for each one of his children. A love that prompted him to come to earth in Jesus, to search for lost people and save them, and to rejoice for each person that is lost and found. But you know, people can feel so guilt-ridden by the past that they think God could never forgive them and accept them. God would never seek them out. He would never forgive them and he could never possibly love them. Years ago, I remember reading a book called Run, Baby, Run about a young boy called Nicky Cruz, a misunderstood teenager from Puerto Rico who became the leader of one of the most notorious gangs in New York. Born one of 18 children, he suffered severe physical and mental abuse as a child. When he was 15, his father sent him to visit an older brother in New York. He ran away from him and lived on the streets, which led him to the gangs and eventually to be their leader. But he struggled with the lifestyle of a warlord, struggled with the fighting gangs, with the killing, with the stealing, with the drugs. And one day, he stumbled upon a preacher called David Wilkerson. And David told him that Jesus loved him and would never stop loving him. Nicky retaliated at that point by threatening to kill him. But one day, he went to one of David's meetings and was converted. His life was changed. He became an evangelist, founder of Nicky Cruz Outreach, an evangelistic Christian ministry. He could witness to the fact that he'd been lost and Jesus had found him. He didn't send him away because he'd been too bad. He didn't tell him that the kingdom was only for good and perfect people. This repentant young man was welcomed and loved. His life became changed through God's grace. Just as I'm reading that now, it's making me think that, you know, for us, that word is so important to people, isn't it? That word that David gave him, that word that he met this person in the street and he gave him the word that Jesus loved him. I mean, we can do that. We can do that with people. We can tell them that Jesus loves them. And you never know what seed that plants in somebody's head and somebody's heart. The fact that it planted a seed in this young man's life so that when the opportunity came, he was there. It was there at a meeting where his life could be changed. It just needed somebody to tell him that Jesus loved him. So now I just want to read you some word from Paul's letter to Timothy. And he says this. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has given me strength, that he considered me trustworthy, appointing me to his service. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, 
I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. Just like Nicky Cruz, Paul was another person who was far away from Jesus. Let's consider his past. He had scoffed at the teachings of Jesus and had hunted down and murdered God's people. He admitted bluntly that he used to be a violent, swearing person, ignorantly persecuting those who disagreed with him. But he said, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. God sought him out on the road to Damascus, forgave him mightily and changed him. And here in his letter to Timothy, Paul summarises the good news, bursting out in praise of God for the free gift of love and faith that was poured over him. Paul shared and spread this good news. And the good news wasn't just about the shepherd who came and sought out his sheep. It was the good news in the light of these words from John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of his sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. A hired hand tends the sheep for money, while the shepherd does it for love. Jesus is not merely doing a job. He is committed to love us and even lay down his life for us. This is the radical and reckless love that God has for his sheep, for his children, for you and for me. Our shepherd who gave his life for each one of us when he died on the cross for our sin. That is the extraordinary, mind-blowing love that is offered to each one of us. <laughs>